Fleck have been in great form for Norwich this season. Tremendous goal for him just after half-time, his seventh of the season against Southampton. But the Saints are a confident side these days, I saw them take the points of Tottenham in the week, and they deserve the draw. Their goal coming midway through the second half, they've got three brothers in the side, Danny Wallace is the eldest, surrounded by defenders, not much on that shot, but enough for the points. A stutter then for Norwich City, but they're still well clear. Middlesbrough home to second place Millwall. Now last week Bernie Slaven got the quickest goal of the day, four minutes. Yesterday he made it in three. There at Liverpool next week. Bernie's entertaining thoughts of a two-minute strike at Anfield. You've been warned, Kenny. Millwall defending the league's only unbeaten record, equalised through Teddy Sheringham, number seven of the season for Teddy, who's poised to sign a new four-year contract. minutes later Millwall took the lead Tony Cascarino the man to watch uh, confidence is the hallmark of the striking art Cascarino's got that in abundance at the moment whoosh just after half time Stuart Ripley equalized a moment's fortune but a touch of class Peter Davenport was watching the match. He'll be joining Borough this week. Their revival must have impressed. Mark Burke shooting them in front. Well, Burke uh, involved again. Middlesbrough leading 3-2. He was tripped by McCleary, so that's a penalty. And Millwall's record, the only unbeaten one left in the league. Seriously threatened now. 4-2, and that was the final result. Coventry City were defending an unbeaten away record at Highbury. Arsenal, the top scorers in Division 1. Coventry might feel that Speedy was fouled there. No doubt, though, about Michael Thomas's spectacular finish. Well, the Arsenal skipper, Tony Adams, has had his critics this season. But they still love him at Highbury, and he likes nothing better than stealing forward and heading in front of the adoring North Bank. 2-0 to Arsenal there, leading London's challenge. On the other hand, Jim, Spurs with only two points from the last 16 available, and with those deducted, went to Villa Park in bottom place. Terry Fenix, fifth of the season, wasn't uplifting, it was an own goal. Here's Paul Gascoigne, the two million pound man, to Chris Waddle, who's having such a sparkling season, but a reckless challenge by Nigel Spink, there was no need for that. A penalty, the chance for Terry Fenix to make amends. His fourth successful penalty of the season. Aston Villa's first home win of the season came last week against Everton. And the man who set them on the way, Tony Daly, he got the winner. After Alan McAnally's fine run, Daly making it to Spurs, still rock bottom. And now Upton Park, and it's West Ham against Liverpool. Commentary here by Martin Tyler. Rush, good effort, great play. Rush really is back in business. And West Ham rolling up their sleeves to try and make the maximum use of the time that remains. But Burrows. And here's Beardsley, and that's 2-0, and that may well be the three points for Liverpool. And it was. Here's Charlton at home to Sheffield Wednesday. Peter Shirtley, formerly of Wednesday, putting Charlton in front. And beaten in five. And now one of the finds of the season, Paul Williams. A little turn and a beautiful shot into the corner. 2-0 Charlton, his eighth of the season. Charlton hadn't won at home. Sheffield Wednesday, unbeaten in three. Got a consolation through David Hodgson, but it wasn't enough. Newcastle are struggling, Forrest are on a run, and Forrest stealing the three points with some brilliant wing play from Gary Crosby. Tears apart the Newcastle defence, a tap in for Lee Chapman, his first for Forrest, they're unbeaten 11, we're at the city ground next week. The only first division game of the day that didn't produce a goal was on plastic, Kenilworth Road, Luton Town against QPR. QPR had the better of it, and might have won, but for Les Seely. a bit of bad luck. At the baseball ground, Derby welcomed the million-pound man, Dean Saunders. Derby, the lowest scorers in the first division, 
Didn't take Saunders long to rectify that. He says this one was a fluke, no doubting the speed of his reflexes. Wimbledon coming back before half-time with a typical equaliser. Peter Shilton in a fair amount of trouble here under pressure from the veteran Cork. Back in from Fairweather, Vinnie Jones' shaven head is there first. El Sage put Derby two up, and then a tremendous piece of skill again from Dean Saunders. Unusually, Roger Joseph is caught in possession, but look at Saunders here. No wonder Oxford fans are in mourning, and Derby are saying, welcome, Dino. Derby then turning on the style. Towards the end, Ted McMinn, arrogant on the ball. The substitute, Gary Mipplewhite, is in 4-1 to Derby. <laughs>